Amen. First Corinthians chapter three, we'll look at verses five through 11 this morning. When I was, it was about 20 years ago when Jess and I first got married and we both had spent some time overseas and short-term missions projects. And shortly after we got married, we started the process of becoming missionaries through the International Mission Board. In fact, I was in a program called 2 Plus 2, which you do two years here in the States and you do two years uh, overseas. And so we'd already picked out a few countries that we were praying for and hoping for that we would go. However, at the same time, I kept getting opportunities to preach and little small uh, country churches almost every weekend, or if it wasn't that, it was for a college ministry or student ministry, and that just kept happening, and it was just something that God was just doing in our life at that time, and so here we are, Jess and I, 20 years ago, thinking about we would be missionaries, and we're trying to decide where we would end up, and as we're sitting on our kitchen floor, I have no idea why we were sitting on our kitchen floor in seminary housing at that time in our small apartment, Jess just turns and looks at me and says, with all the opportunities that you're getting to preach, do you feel like we should stay here in the States? And so we sat on the kitchen floor, we, cr- we cried, uh, we prayed, and um, it was there that God began to prepare us to be church planters. And from that decision, we, it came to, it led to multiple decisions that ended up leaving us, leading us to Greenville, North Carolina, with our son, Finn, who at that time, who's now 17, who is now, who was then an infant. And I remember at that time, there was a lot of talk about church planning networks and what does it mean to be a church planner? We didn't know what we were doing when we moved here. So I started to reach out to different networks and resources to try to understand what it means to plant a church. And so I'd get assessed by these networks to figure out if I was a church planter or not. And so you go through and they figure out what type of church planner are you? Or are you a, how, how well you communicate and how well you're entrepreneurial or if you're a gatherer, if you're pastoral, if you're administratively gifted and the list goes on and on and on. And I remember all those conversations, thinking about planting, thinking about what the future would hold, and when it was focused on what type of leader are you. But as I've sat in the seat of a leader for a while and watched leadership over the years, I've learned a couple of things. One, if Christ is not the foundation, none of it matters. That's number one. And number two, a church is not built on a planter, but rather the people of God who are on mission together. And I say all that to you today because this is what Paul actually lays out for the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5. He says, what then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants, though whom you believed as the Lord assigned to each. This is Paul talking to a church that he was at for 18 months, saw it grow. He moved on and planted other churches. The longest that Paul ever stayed anywhere was three years And then he talks about himself, and he says, I'm just a servant. And then you have Apollos. Apollos came along uh, later than Paul, and we don't know how long Apollos was there, but we know that he was a gifted communicator. He was known for his charisma and his teaching ability. And he says, who are they? He goes, they're just servants that the Lord has assigned to this role. And if you remember even earlier this year, when we went through 1 Corinthians together, People align more with one or the other. They align more with Peter. They align more with Paul. They align more with Apollos. And Paul kind of sets them straight. He says in verse 6, he says, I planted, Apollos watered, but who gave the growth, church? God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. You see what's happening here? It isn't, the the most important thing isn't the kind of leader that plants it, it's God who gives the growth. And church, that is something we all have to remember this morning. God's power and work supersedes any of our gifts or our abilities. And it's always God who grows his church, always. And then in verse eight, he says, he who plants and he who waters are one. And each one will receive his wages according to his labor for we are God's fellow workers. That's he's talking about all of us, church. We are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. And I love this, and I hope you hear what Paul says here. He says, the church is not a planter or a pastor, it's a people. And we are God's field, we are God's building. And this is so many times that when the Bible talks about the church, it talks about it in a plural sense. It uses it in the, in the uh, analogies that is used for the church. It's always about uh, a people, 
and it's more than one. And you'll see the New Testament uses words like this. Uh, it's a temple. You'll say it, it's like a family. It's a flock. It's a nation. It's a city, or it's a body made up of many parts. And all of that to show in the New Testament over and over again that each one of us are responsible for a gospel legacy, and we have a unique and special place within the body of Christ that we all belong to. And then he goes on, verse 10, according to the grace of God given to me, like a skill master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care of how he or she builds upon it. No one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Amen. And church, I hope you hear this this morning in these five verses that each one of us has a role in how we play, how the church applies to our life and how Jesus is built upon it. In other words, each one of us are responsible for a legacy that we would leave for the gospel. And none of us can do that without the foundation of Christ, that he is the foundation of every true church. And church, I can tell you, that I've gotten to see this happen here at Integrity Church time and time again, where the people of God have, have grown and they've built their life on the foundation that is Christ Jesus. And I can think back to 20 years ago with Jess and I praying in our apartment, and neither she and I would have ever imagined what God would do here. That God has given us much more than we had ever anticipated or dreamed of, and he's given us this community to serve and do life with and to raise our family alongside of. And over the last decade and a half, Jess and I can definitely say we are completely different people than we were before we moved here. I mean, we were kids planting this church, y'all. I can, I can guarantee you that. I remember days where we would just have no idea what we were doing. We had the boxes that were the files of Integrity Church were in my Buick LeSabre that I moved here with. That's what we were at that time. And I can think back to all the years of, of us toiling and thriving and hoping to see what God would do here. And now we're in our mid-40s and with, with two teenage sons who show us every single day that we still don't know what we're doing. And we have a lot to learn. And God has used our church to help us grow in our relationship with Jesus, help us grow in our relationship with each other. And I want to tell you, church, you have patiently given me uh, space to experience growth and healing and transformation as a leader, and I could not have asked for a better place to pastor and to grow my family. And as I've been through this journey of change and sanctification, I have seen my dreams and my passions shift. And though my role at Integrity, I've loved the process of helping people grow. I've also given opportunities to see individuals and leaders within our church and without, outside of our church, even the last few years outside of our church to see leaders grow. And this shift has caused me to pause and to be curious about the, what the Lord is doing in my life and the life of my family. And so after much consideration and prayer and wise counsel, we've made the decision to make a change from my role as one of the pastors of Integrity Church to launch my own coaching business and ministry. And I want to tell you that, that I think about what that looks like 20 years ago when Jess and I were praying in our kitchen, to just this year praying in our kitchen again, and thinking about the future. And this is in that moment earlier this year is when we realized that it's time for us to make a change and to be obedient in this next season of life. And church, hear me say this, this decision has not come easy. It's come with much joy, much tears, and sorrow. Although we're excited about the future, we still feel significant grief from this move. And we've absolutely loved serving with you together. But we want to be good stewards of what God is doing in this next season of life. And we're doing this because we want to leave a gospel legacy, and we're trying to do that in what this season looks like for us. And I want to tell you this, too. We're not moving we love this community. We love our home. We love our neighbors. We love our friends. And we absolutely love our church. 
And we'll likely take a short break after this transition to give us space, but our hope is to still remain faithful members of Integrity Church after all the changes have been made. And Lord willing, this shift will take place sometime at the beginning of, of next year. So this won't happen until earlier next year. My goal between now and then is to remain in my current role as pastor. I'll continue to preach and lead the mission of our church and how I will help assist our elders who I trust and love dearly. And over the last few months, they've been such an encouragement to me, helping me process this and helping us move forward and strategize about how we would find a replacement for me. And I also love our team that we've gotten to work a lot alongside of and our incredible staff team and others that have helped us process this within our church. And so we are prayerfully searching for a new pastor to fill this role. And my heart is to see this change move forward as successfully as possible. And I realize this might be difficult news for some of you. And I want to tell you the big changes are always hard. And I grieve with you, although we might grieve differently, but I grieve with you while we experience this change. But with that, know that we do not grieve as others do. First Thessalonians 4 says that we don't grieve as others do without hope. And because of the gospel, we can grieve and still anticipate beauty and redemption ahead. Amen? And this is Jesus' church. An integrity church was never built on one person or one leader or one pastor or even a group of pastors. We're one body who is made up of different parts, and we all belong to him. And it's Jesus who planted this church, and it's Jesus who sustains this church. And church, I have many months and sermons that I have left to preach here. But before that, I want to share one more thing. But before I share that, I want to ask the elders to come up, if you don't mind. Um, Hal, um, Adam, and Lucas, if you guys could come up. And uh, can we just give it a, a hand for these gentlemen and their families? And I want to uh, leave you with something that Paul says to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 16. The church is wondering, as Paul lays it out, who would lead them? They're asking the question, is Paul going to come back? Is Apollos going to come back? And he says this at the very end of the letter. He says, 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14, he says, be watchful. Integrity Church, be watchful. He says, stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. And let all that you do be done in love. Be watchful means that we don't let there be any place for the enemy to discourage us or tear us down. To stand firm in the faith, it's the gospel of Jesus Christ who unites us, and it's Jesus who sustains us, and it's Jesus who causes us to grow. And he says to act like men. He's saying that to men and women. He's saying he wants us to be mature, to allow this change to grow us and to mature us into the men and women that he's called us to be. And to be strong, to be strong mentally, to be strong emotionally, to be strong spiritually. And then he finally says this, let all that you do be done in love. With the same love that Christ who saved us would draw us together as a community of believers. That we would continue to be faithful, to live out his mission, and to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Integrity Church, thank you for continuing to be such an incredible community. May we all trust him together. God help us.